Welcome to Smart Finance 360, the podcast where money matters meet innovative thinking. Every week, we dive deep into the world of finance, exploring trends, debunking myths, and bringing you the latest insights from industry experts. Whether you're a seasoned investor, a financial newbie, or somewhere in between, this is your go-to source for becoming financially savvy. All right, well, I got Ryan Taylor here, RT, the man. He's a father. He's a real estate guru. He's an investor. He's a finance guru as well and total stud in the financing world. So I'm stoked to have you on because you're an author of two books and you've done a lot of successful things, whether it be in the real estate sector, financial sector. You've yeah. just done a, you've been around, man. You've done a lot of things. Yeah. Tell me about your books. I want to dive in about your, your, your two books you've done. Um, tell me about your first one. Uh, I think you have it here. Pull it out. Let's let's. Yeah. So I, I actually, you know, as things started slowing down this year, I thought I'd take the extra time to focus on different things. Um, so I taught myself how to publish a book. Um, and I wanted to do this around, um, Dave Ramsey's snowball effect. Okay. So that's the whole premise of it is, uh, teaching people the snowball effect, but utilizing their home equity to do so. Gotcha. So they're using the equity in their home, depending on what part of the United States they're at, but they can use that to pay off and leverage other debts, basically, you're saying. Exactly. Yep. It's typically the snowball, uh, you know, you pay off the higher interest stuff and work your way down. Yeah. How does that work in detail? Like, give me an example on kind of the, the different, is the difference in interest rates or kind of what, how do you do that when you yeah. analyze it? So it really, I, you know, it, and I'm no expert, but I know a lot about it from doing loans, you yeah. know, but, um, a lot of it varies based on the situation. So if you have a lot of high interest stuff, you want to pay that stuff down first and then take the difference that you were paying there and put it towards the next highest. Gotcha. You snowball it down, you know, utilizing your equity you get it done in one fail swoop and you take that difference. So you're consolidating all to one. So for example, let's say you have a car loan debt, you got credit card debt, you maybe have another type of private loan debt plus your mortgage. And then you can maybe take a look at your mortgage equity to be able to basically pay those off, put it in all lump one sum. And yeah. so basically at long story short, let's say you have, you know, 4,000 a month in obligations, this can cut you down to like 2,200 bucks. Yeah. And then boom, you're saving some money there. Yeah. Uh, crazy concept. How does that work with equity? Like what, what are kind of the requirements for people to be able to use the equity in their homes or how does that work? So we're, we're in a interesting time right now in this marketplace. We've seen home equities skyrocket in the past three years, higher than Sir. they've done on, in the past. And uh, with that being said, consumer debt has skyrocketed as well. And so, um, in the early two, 2021, 2020, we were at the 2% interest rate. So everybody's married to those interest rates, but then they're also stuck with a 17% car note or a uh, credit card note. And, uh, they're still and spending. So, and yeah, they're still spending, um, those blended interest rates, uh, if you, used your equity to pay off those higher interest stuff and then take the difference that you save there and apply it towards your mortgage or apply it towards an asset that is going to gain rather than uh, paying the bank's interest, you know? So what, what's your thoughts on, cause you said the debt's just still rising. What do you think as far as, you know, right now rates are historically high, but if let's say rates dip hypothetically to the fives, yeah. How many, because people are so far in debt, how many of those married rates in the twos are they going to probably have to still cash out on to consolidate from like, let's say mid twos to mid fives? Are you going to yeah. see that? Do you think that could happen? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it should. I think people would be stupid to be married to that. I mean, I get it. I get why they're doing that. Um, it, if If they have high interest, if you have a car loan that is... $1,000 a month. If you have a credit card that's 26%, um, 
or a Sears card or whatever. I don't even know. Is yeah. Sears still around? <laughs> Kmart? I don't know. A JC Penney's card. <laughs> they, there's so many checkouts that you can uh, you can get any checkout. Like yeah. Old Navy card. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. Everywhere. But so so you have all these cards. You would be silly not to utilize your equity as a financial tool. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. And explain to me on kind of the equity piece, what type of equities can you do besides just a traditional cash out? Are there any other options you can use? So there is the HELOC. Okay, explain um, a little bit about the HELOC. The HELOC is it's a, it's a, a, an adjustable rate. It's based on prime. Gotcha. And then depending on what your credit is at, it can be prime plus three, four, five percent. So a lot of times, if prime's at what eight and a quarter right uh, now, um, you know you're looking at thirteen percent. Um, granted, HELOCs are typically interest only. You know, so yeah. you're not really paying off a lot of principal there. So sometimes they make sense, and uh, a lot of times HELOCs can be a great tool for financial um so, you, so you'd say you have a definite game plan if you're going to take out a home equity line of credit whether it be an eta of when you can pay that off how you can yeah. pay that off just understanding that it, although there are products that are fixed there are also ones majority that could be interest only or what's called yeah. an arm adjustable rate explain a little bit about adjustable rates and how that works as far as you know compared to a fixed so they're based on an index okay. and so um you know heloc isn't it's like an arm, but it doesn't have. Well, I guess I guess there is HELOCs that are fixed for a certain amount of years. So. It just depends, right? Yeah. But this one specifically, I think people yeah. get in trouble when they don't do their homework and they get into those exactly. adjustable rate mortgages on on a HELOC. So know when the adjustment periods are, because um, every loan is different. You know, if you look at an arm, it can be a a, a five one arm but it can have a 525 adjustment period, meaning yeah. the first year it adjusts, it, it can go up as high as 5%, you know? Um, so just know those adjustment periods and be smart about it. And, and it pays to have a loan officer, a mortgage expert, a real estate professional that you can call and just bounce this stuff off of. Yeah, I think analyzing all the options are huge because a lot of people don't understand because I've seen multiple times where the home equity line of credit made perfect sense. And then other times it would be a astronomical, just bad decision. They yeah. need to instead do the 30 year fixed cash out refinance on their property. Well, with, with FHA right now, FHA has always been um, a saving grace, if you will, for these types of situations. FHA will allow you to go cash out uh, above 90% in certain cases. Um, so that's up to 90% of your equity on of, that piece. of your equity. Yeah. Sorry. I should clarify that. But, um, and, and then there's less, uh, credit requirements. So you have lower credit scores, but then you can essentially still get the yeah. financing needed. For example, I had a borrower that had, uh, they, it was a $650,000 house. They, they only owed like $220,000 on their mortgage. Yeah. Um, it was a 4% mortgage, but they had $75,000 in debt, whether that was charge cards, credit cards, you know, this guy was an auto nut. So he had a ton of cars and stuff. So, yeah. so but we were able to, uh, pay off all that debt, um, and then give him an additional hundred thousand dollars to improve his house and his overall monthly liabilities lowered that's crazy so take a step back real quick guy had a ton of debt he's able to pay off the debt update his house and then still had lower payment so that's that's unbelievable as far as like yeah. options go a lot of people think refinancing is a bad thing it's not necessarily a bad thing it's actually no. a good thing a lot of times if the lower payment makes sense as far as amortization, what's cool now is they actually have programs out there that you can refinance into a 26 or a 25 or 24 year mortgage oh, yeah. and you can stay on that route. So that's a common thing where people are like, I don't want to reset back to 30 years. It's like, well, you, you don't need to do that. Yeah, you can I'm, do 27 years if you want. The thing to. that I'm scrolling through this book that I like is you keep your books very simple and easy to read. So for example, you could really have a solid game plan after reading this and it looks like it's nothing more than about an hour read max yeah. like well and that was 
that was by design. You know, I didn't want people to get caught up in a lot of extra BS. Yep. You know, the, the concepts are, the concepts are simple, but then also, um, the reality is I want you to call me, you know, yeah. read the book. I'll give you the concepts, but, um, let me walk you through it, you know? So yeah, I, I love it. Um, I think it's really good. This is called debt free, a step-by-step guide to financial freedom by Ryan Taylor. This is a great, this is a great book here. Um, I like that you can provide value not only to this, but to your clients. And it's just the, the thing I like best is that it really is just a good read that you can just apply immediately. It's not yeah. something that like, you're like, oh man, I don't really understand what's going on. It's a little over my head. I do like that you did that. This book's cool. Uh, what you do for people to get them debt free. This is great, especially during refi periods. This is really good in yeah. general too, especially people who go through divorces. You can help teach them how to get on. Because when, especially when you go through a divorce, it's like the worst events ever. Yeah. You can definitely get ahead on making sure that uh, beat your coach on, you want to have a fresh start. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's something that you could definitely use. This is great. What I'm more excited to talk about, though, is your other book that you have. Because your other book is yeah. very cool. Yeah. Tell me and, a little bit about this one. This one, actually, I'll pull it up here. This one, um, you know, kind of circling around about them being shorter. Um, this one's called Embracing Simplicity healing from loss and heartbreak. Um, my father passed away a few months ago and, uh, you know, I knew it was coming and, uh, it doesn't matter. You know, that stuff's coming. It still hurts just the same. Somebody could tell you they're punching you in the face, but it would still hurt. Yeah. Uh, Until it settles in, right. The reality of it. So my mom inspired me to push this through. Um, I, uh, she's a strong, amazing woman, but she's heartbroken and uh and and I've dealt a lot in my life with loss and heartbreak and I wanted to put something out there that somebody could read in a 2 hour period or a weekend putting it um up and down and have a victory in their life um it gives you steps to deal with loss gives you steps to deal with death um heartbreak um what yeah. are you, what, so you obviously, let me see, this is great. Um, what have you done as far as like those steps? What, what's, what's kind of something that you, you know, one thing you it, it through that vulnerable period is just the basics of being gra- grat- uh, gratitude, you know, being grateful for, um, just the small things, you know, and, and that boils down to financial hardships as well. You know, you, this is a tough time in this market, yeah. you know, inflation is really high. Groceries are expensive, you know? There's, um, but there's still so much to be thankful for. Yeah. You have a lot to be grateful about. Gratitude does definitely go a long way. Uh, one of the pieces that I liked that I saw in the book is embracing nature. Tell us a little about what you've done as far as how nature helped you throughout yeah. uh, the time of, uh, so I, uh, in my early thirties, I experienced, um, some loss and I, started taking the train from Salt Lake to Colorado on the first day of spring every, every year. And this is the Amtrak train with the, yeah. with the panoramic windows. Okay. And it goes along the Colorado river the whole way. And, uh, and like focus on your goals and focus on, uh, the rebirth of what you want to work on, you know, because the world around you is coming back to life. The leaves are coming back. The, the water's um, rushing hard or the runoff, if you will. So um, that's been something that I've done a lot. But even just getting out and getting fresh air, you yeah. know, some vitamin D. You it's know? crazy. Uh, uh, just going outside can help going on a walk can change everything. That's cool yeah. you do the, the, the train. How long does it take usually yeah. to get from Utah to Colorado? That's such a hidden secret. You need to yeah. take your kids on it. It's it's very reasonably priced you could take yeah. your whole family the kids are free pretty much so under 200 bucks round trip okay take it to glenwood springs which is beautiful downtown salt lake to glenwood's like 90 bucks okay and uh it takes like eight or nine hours but you, you know? can just sit there you're evaluating your goals your life the nature is beautiful you say it's a panoramic view so you could yep. see all around you yep and the, the that's seats, really like, cool we're sitting now we could literally do this podcast on the train 
We should. We should. Our next that podcast awesome. is on the train. Let's, We're going to do, do it. it. Let's do it. And so Yo. spring's good. I, I love the analogy of things are just sprouting. It's a, it's, you know, it's coming back to life. The Amish, that's the only, that, so all, there's always Amish people on the train, which is funny. I, and I've had long conversations with them. Yeah. The, after one train ride, they invited me. They're like, you know, uh, Ryan, if you're ever in Indiana or Pennsylvania, wherever they were from, they're like, you're welcome to stay with my family. I'm like, oh, cool. Do you have like a Facebook or something? How do I get a hold of <laughs> like, you? No. <laughs> like, you like, here's my to, address. <laughs> you want me to mail you a yeah. letter? Like, dear Jebediah, yeah. <laughs> I hope this letter <laughs> reaches you well. So anyway, you gotta uh, try that. You gotta still, you gotta take up their offer. Yeah, no, I, it would be a cool. Like, I'm gonna write you a letter. Yeah, I'm gonna be here in the spring. Yeah, get that churn that butter, Let's get that ready. Butter and mi- guarantee their food's delicious too. My wife would actually dig that. Mm. I gotta do the train ride, and then we gotta stay with some it Amish would, folks. It would be cool. It would be cool. But the train ride, take take your kids. Cool. I'm I'm gonna take my boy on it. He's just at that age where he would love it. My kid but, loves trains too. Oh my gosh, it's and and for. Even if you just do it by yourself, you know, like I said, a lot of times I did it when I was running my internet business. It was my way to get away. Yeah. You know, nine so hours. So you suggest being prepared for it mentally in a way that you have a plan of just you're trying to set your goals. Yeah. You know, you're, you're focusing on the nature. You're, you're, would you say kind of not have your electronics near you, try to keep it? A little bit, you know. Yeah, I mean, but you can as well. You know, it's like you don't need to go Amish on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's like there is, it's a nine-hour ride, you know. So it's like you you have time to uh, meditate or just have some time to yourself. But you also have time to, you know, catch up on a movie or something. Or, you know, when the lights go down, it's just you time, man. And it's a beautiful thing because it's nature, you know, and it's really cool. Which kind of segues to that because that that was something that has helped with me in the past dealing with loss and heartbreak. Yeah, I, I love you know heart, and that's really cool about the train. Um, so anything it, else on here that you know you've been through? You've been through a lot of heartbreak in your life. What like besides having a positive attitude? What would you say that keeps you going every day? To you know you're very successful now, and uh, seem very happy as well i mean yeah. peers obviously but uh i, I just see you're, you're a jolly happy guy i see a you know positive outlook so are you saying i'm fat is that no jolly <laughs> jolly is that laugh jolly, right there I think fat. no no everyone's fat compared to me because i'm the freaking skinniest yeah, guy alive i'm yeah. creepy skinny but uh no i you just seem happy but you've been through a lot where yeah, most man, people could you most people could take the negative you know course right no it's like we focus so much on the wrong stuff in life and and i think it's 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 a very common thing to get stuck in in your head you know and i i I do it all the time you know i i always have this saying it's easier to give birth than it is to resurrect Mm -hmm. you know and it's it's a great saying because you want to give birth to new habits you want to give birth to um, all these, uh, like a new career or mm. learning something new and you don't want to resurrect bad ones, you know, yeah. um, or it's hard to resurrect bad yeah. ones. Um, and the older I get, I kind of feel like maybe I'm trying to resurrect certain things. And so I need to work on, um, giving birth, you know, <laughs> as weird as that sounds, <laughs> you know? but, uh, Especially in this marketplace, you know, it's like we are evolving big time. Um, I got back into the business after being out. So I got into real estate in 98. The MLS was brand new on the internet. Mm. It was like the first year on the internet. Um, And you still had the option to use the catalog. Or use the internet. Or use the internet. And, um, and it was, it was an interesting time, you know, um, then after 9-11, I decided to switch to the mortgage side of things. Um, we were in a boom then. My best friend Sam was um, launching an internet department, and so we um, steamrolled that, and we did very well. Um, back then, you didn't need licensing. 
you could just be you, if you wild fog, wild west. Yeah, if you if you could fog a mirror, you could yeah. do a mortgage. Crazy. You know? And uh, but they started adopting licensing more and more. Um, after the 08 crash, I had some of my best years, and uh, I was a branch manager at that time period. But I was investing in an internet business, and I decided to step away and just focus on that because you can only do so much. You yeah, only have so much bandwidth. Yeah, you only have so much time, too. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, after I sold that business, I, I just got back into the mortgage business in uh, 2021. Good and, time to uh, be back. Yeah, it was a great time to get back. <laughs> it was a great time. It, unfortunately, I was only on the 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 Tell ass it. end of that um, yeah that time period because it was towards the end of twenty one. Yeah. Still, nonetheless, you know, I had a, I had a good sphere of influence from my experience and my yeah, you past foundation on it that I was able to to kind of jump back into it. But it's important to be able to evolve with the changes in any market. And any time. Yeah, I think that's a, a huge thing that people don't like change, right? People don't like to yeah. to do things that are uncomfortable. And what's crazy is the things that you do that are the most uncomfortable usually are the things that you see the most success in, which is, again, probably a very cliche thing to say because everyone says it, but yeah. nobody does it. Yeah. Like nobody, nobody understands the simplicity of it is either. Like just working out every single day. That's why I like your book, Embracing Simplicity. Embracing simplicity. It's not just from healing from loss and heartbreak you have, but like I like that you embrace the simplicity in discipline and doing the same thing every day, yeah. not because you're motivated or just, just disciplined. It's just you got to get done. Yeah. I like that you take sometimes the emotion out of it where it's just, I got to get this done because I got to get yeah. it done. Yeah. So, I mean, you're crushing it right now. I appreciate uh, all that you've done. I think you're an inspiration for many, especially, you know, writing books. This should be another podcast of how to write a book. Yeah. I think that would be another cool thing to do because a lot of people don't know how because you do it too. It um, so, guys, if, if you want to get a hold of, of, of Ryan and RT, he it's, his nickname is RT. Um, another time we got to talk about that nickname too. He's got so much time to talk with this guy. This guy's super interesting, but he works really hard on helping people be debt free. Um, big fan of him. So if you guys need to go hold, get a hold of RT, he's he's all over social media. He got a huge TikTok following. What's your channel called on that? It's called the Real Estate Vibes. It's yeah, real, TikTok. Real Estate Vibes. A ton, uh, right? Almost seventy thousand followers. Yeah, on it's there. great. Same thing on Instagram and Facebook. It's all the Real Estate Vibes by You Mortgage. So. Yeah. I love it, man. Well, appreciate you being on. You're Thank total you for stud. having me. Keep crushing. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs>